Navigator of the Seas, a Voyage-class ship sailing out of Los Angeles, California with three, four, and seven night itineraries. Renovated in 2019, or better known as Amplified, to include new thrills and chills to the ship. We're going to start at the Amplified pool deck, but be sure to stick around to the end of the video where we'll show you the ultimate secret deck. The main pool features a beach-like vibe with a splash pad, two main swim areas, and plenty of loungers. Just above on deck 12 are two large covered whirlpools on each side, perfectly placed for a view of the big screen and some people watching down below. The main pool area bar is the lime and coconut, offering its own menu, and don't worry, if it's busy, there's a second bar up on deck 12. Perfect if you are in one of the whirlpools or just want to hang out one deck up. There's also a third level to the Lyman Coconut for seating and lounging. However, it wasn't set up during our voyage due to the high wind. If you don't want to wander far from the pool for a bite, head on over to Johnny Rockets for a burger, fries, and a shake. Johnny Rockets is an upcharge, however, but today I'm only getting a shake with vodka. Yes, they make adult shakes too, included if you have the drink package. On the other side is El Loco Fresh, a complimentary restaurant serving tacos, burritos, nachos, and quesadillas. If you know us, then you know we love us some cruise day tacos, and loaded, of course. These plates should hold us over until lunch. Be sure to stick around for the sail away party. It's a lot of fun and sure to get you moving. Sing along and dance to some popular music and you just might run into Grant. We just met him and he's got some moves. Keep the excitement going by heading towards the back of the ship for some water slide action. The Blaster and Riptide are tube and mat racing water slides with a covered stairwell at the top to protect you from the winds. If you've got some skill, try the Flow Rider just behind the water slides. It offers surfing or boogie boarding rides on its continuous wave. Moving back where we came from is the basketball court and the rock wall. I didn't climb as fast as these guys did, but it was a lot of fun. Just below the rock wall is the Challenge Arcade where you can play games, air hockey, skee ball, and more. All right, now that the adrenaline is coming down, let's head back to the midship area and look at some more of the chill things to do. Within the walking track are several private cabanas, perfect for some relaxation and an amazing view of the ocean. You can also walk behind the lime and coconut to the solarium. This is a no kids area with a centralized pool and two big whirlpools on either side. Plus, it has its own bar. Perfect. Head back up to Deck 13 for some putt-putt and Navigator Dunes. Nice shot, boys! Let's have some ice cream. Ah, the Windjammer, serving breakfast, lunch, tea time, and dinner. Whenever we cruise Carnival, we're never excited for the buffet. In fact, it ranks dead last in food for us. But on Royal Caribbean, you're in for a treat. Just look at all this food. Eggs, sausage, beans, grilled tomato, tater tots, jams, purees, chocolate, crackers, salamis, cheeses, all for your toast. Or just grab an avocado toast. Donuts, danishes, muffins, croissants, rolls, omelets, egg whites, fried eggs, butter, bread, pancakes, French toast, cinnamon rolls, beef stew, rice, veggies, corn on the cob, chicken, potato wedges, burgers, hot dogs, mac and cheese, fries, soup anyone? Paella! 
more beef, mashed potatoes, gravy, more chicken, penne pasta, shepherd's pie, steamed veggies, Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese, provolone cheese, wraps, sliders, sandwiches, salads, and desserts. You name it! I'll take two. Near the entrance is a full bar, which doubles as the bar for the two upcharged restaurants on either side. When you enter, Jamie's Italian is on your left. It has a cozy at-home feel with a menu designed by celebrity chef Jamie Oliver. And here's our section over here, the wine locker. On the other side is Chop's Grill. This has a more elegant upscale feel to it, perfect for a formal night steak dinner. Throughout the ship are these Cruise Compass interactive screens to help you find your way around or inform you of different events or activities happening now. But before we head to the lower decks, let's cover everything else up top. After all that food, we might need to kickstart our metabolism. So we're heading up one deck to the Vitality at Sea Fitness Center. The gym includes lots of weight machines, free weights, and the best part is the placement of the cardio machines with a view of the ocean. On the other side, you'll find an exit with an aft view of the ship and the sea. Loop all the way around and you'll find the patio section of the living room, which is the teens club. Next door is Adventure Ocean and Royal Babies as well. The last area on Deck 12 is the Vitality at Sea Spa, but we didn't have access to it, so here's Royal Caribbean's picture. Comment if you think it's color enhanced. Now up to Deck 14 for the Cosmopolitan Club. During the day, it's a quiet, relaxing area with a bar and panoramic views of the ship and the ocean below. At night, however, this floor turns into karaoke or a night of dancing. Next to Cosmopolitan is Izumi Japanese Cuisine, and just like Chops, it's an upcharge and offers a dining room with generous ocean views and upscale dining. Lastly, we're visiting the one and only thing on Deck 15, the Royal Escape Room. This is a really fun game that must be solved in one hour to win. Team up and work together because it's not easy. Reservations are required. Now we can finally explore the ship's main areas below, starting with the Royal Promenade. Towards the back is the R-Bar, serving cocktails in a retro yet cozy setting. Across is the Shore Excursions desk and guest services. The interior cabins with a promenade view give a Vegas feel to the strip. Port Merchants is your duty-free alcohol and tobacco store, to take off the ship of course. You can also purchase forgotten bathroom items here. We both ironically forgot our hairbrush and comb. Regalia is your jewelry store, with higher end rings, watches, necklaces, and more. At the collection, you can purchase souvenirs such as your very own ship model, perfumes, purses, t-shirts, and hats. Across is the Bamboo Room, one of Navigator's newer additions, a tropical tiki themed bar with some upcharged drinks. But we didn't care too much for the specialty drinks, they were mostly loaded with sugar. However, we did love this set of rainbow shots our bartender made us. Oh, yeah, this is Yeah, we had to come back on another night to experience that again. Next door is to drive for, where we can get our hair styled up nice for the day. And across is Copper and Clover, an English style pub serving its own cocktail menu and beer. At night, be sure to stop by for some solo artist entertainment. Now before we move further down the promenade, we have to talk about this bridge. This is where you'll catch loads of entertainment. Everything from dance parties, parades, to contests. Remember Grant from the Sail Away Party? Well here he is, showcasing his dance moves for everyone to see. He's not afraid of judgment. He knows his moves are friggin' awesome. 
And for that, everyone loved him. So today he was awarded the winner of the Sexiest Man competition. Good job, Grant. On Halloween, we joined the costume contest parade on the bridge and brought our best game as Pirates of the Caribbean. But we were defeated by a sweet 102-year-old lady in a wheelchair. Next, we're headed to Playmaker Sports Bar and Arcade. This is a great place to catch the game on one of the TVs or play some games of your own. We have arcades, pool tables, giant Jenga, table tennis, shuffleboard, and more. Besides that, the food is amazing. It's an upcharge, but well worth it. Trust us when we say the wings are one of the best things on any ship. Across is Ben & Jerry's ice cream. This is an upcharge, unless you're in a Ben & Jerry's suite. Attached is Cafe Promenade where you can pick up complimentary deli style snacks like cheeses, olives, meats, sandwiches, wraps, and if you love Sorrento's on other royal ships, this is where you will find similar pizza made fresh. You'll also find complimentary water, coffee, and tea. Now we have reached the forward and have arrived at the Star Lounge. Various activities will occur here during your cruise. Right now is a shopping show, later we found the art auction, but if you know us, you know what we came to do. Party at the Silent Disco! Buddy doing shots! Shots! Let's go! Woo! Alongside the Star Lounge entrance is the Diamond Club, accessible to guests with 80 or more cruise points, which isn't us. Directly below the Star Lounge is the Royal Theater. It is two decks tall with an entrance on deck four and stadium seating gradually leading down to deck three where the stage is set. Catch shows like Ballroom Fever or Showgirl or these goons. Leaving the theater and staying on deck four, we find Hooked Seafood, an upcharge restaurant with amazing seafood dishes, serving oysters, shrimp, crab cakes, fish and chips, or if you're really hungry, try ordering the whole main lobster. Next, we arrive at Schooner Bar. We nicknamed it home since we visited the bar many times throughout our cruise. We loved the old nautical sailor look and the lavender daiquiri was the most ordered cocktail by our group. We started our bar crawl here, we took group pictures and just found ourselves hanging out at the schooner bar often. They do feature a piano player on some nights and on this night, this wasn't him. Alright, we're going right now. Anybody else? Yeah. Deck 3 mention. Continuing through Deck 4, we enter Casino Royale. The casino features tons of slot machines on one side and table games on the other. The center features a bar and a set of stairs leading up to the middle of the Royal Promenade, making it easy to access all your favorite shops, bars, and restaurants just steps away from the casino. Upon exiting the casino, you'll find this beautiful stairwell that you can use to access Deck 5 or Deck 3. On one side is Starbucks Coffee, which is an upcharge, but don't forget Cafe Promenade has free coffee if you don't want to pay. On the other side is Boleros, a Spanish-themed bar with cozy seating and live entertainment in the afternoons and evenings. Let's take that stairwell down to Deck 3 and check out Studio B, the Art Gallery, and the Photo Gallery. The Photo Gallery has an interactive screen where you can swipe your C-Pass to see your photos that have been taken throughout the cruise. And there we are! You can also order a frame keychain, or other souvenirs to go with your photo, including this really cool 3D glass picture. If you really want to go professional, you can get your photos taken in this private studio. Alongside is the art gallery. If you like the art auctions, this is where you can scope out the art ahead of time. Next we're entering Studio B. This is where you can catch a live performance on ice or the indoor drone show. 
but in our case, we're going ice skating. On longer sailings, you can even play laser tag here. When it's time for dinner, head to the back of the ship to the main dining room. The main dining room is three decks tall, and depending on where your table is, you will need to enter on that deck. In our case, we needed to enter on deck four. If you are unsure which deck your table is on, or even where to sit, a host will help you find your table at the entrance. The food is good and the staff always keeps the energy fun and festive. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to stick around for the secret deck! Moving up to deck 6 is Next Cruise, where you can book your next cruise at a discounted rate. Or you can book with me. I work for Expedia and no one books more cruises than us. Wait, is that Icon of the Seas? On deck 7 is the library and card room where you can build a puzzle, play some board games, or just read a book. Man, I'm really thinking about booking Icon. Spoiler alert, I did. Just a couple more things before we show you our room tour, followed by the secret deck we promised. Heading down to deck 2 to show you the last public area is the conference center. These are the meeting rooms you will go to if you have a reserved corporate meeting, a scheduled lecture, or if you attend the Friends of Bill W. or the Friends of Jimmy K. meetings. Hopefully you will never need to visit deck 1, as that's where the medical facility is located. I know from experience on Symphony of the Seas that it's not a good time. But I'm also grateful that the medical staff is top-notch and as professional as they come. Now on to the room tour. The hallways of the stateroom are filled with some questionable art, but fun to look at after a few drinks. We stayed in cabin 9690, category 4D Ocean View Balcony. Upon entering, you can see why it's called an Ocean View Balcony. You have a big porthole window along with a glass door leading to your balcony. Immediately, we were in love with the aft corner style balcony. We knew the balcony would give us miles of ocean view in our own little private corner, plus a little table for oatmeal in the morning. Here's our view of the morning in Ensenada. Our favorite thing about the shower is the rounded glass door. No shower curtain sticking to you. Standard sink and toilet. The closets were roomy with shelves and lots of hangers, even extra bars for added hanger space below. Drawers on both sides of the vanity, one with included hair dryer, cabinet space, safe for your valuables, and a mini fridge down below. The vanity includes two standard plugs and one European. We were surprised by chocolate dipped strawberries in a bottle of Domaine St. Michel Sparkling Brut. Well, the Long Beach police have arrived and they're telling us it's time to reveal the secret deck. So this is what we're going to do. From deck four, we're going to walk through the sliding doors near the forward elevators to the outside deck area. From there, we're going to continue to walk towards the forward of the ship up the stairs to deck five. As you continue to walk through this short passage, you'll pass a small push gate. That will lead you to the front of the ship on the helicopter pad. We're not sure if this area is allowed to passengers, but we assure you, a crew member told us that we have to check this area out. Now it's time for only one thing. Okay, let's go. I feel like the captain is watching us at this very moment. We continued walking around and found the other set of stairs leading back down to deck four. By the way, if you need a peaceful spot to relax without any crowds but includes the sound and view of the ocean, this is it. And if you walk all the way down to the other side, you'll find arguably the best view of all. 
No, no, not the dog poop station, but the aft view where the propellers stir up the ocean water. The view feels unreal. It makes you feel so small and yet you can't take your eyes off it. Well, that's it for Navigator of the Seas. If you made it to the end, type hashtag AFVIEW in the comments. If you want more information on the Navigator and her sailings, email me at BetsyScruiseDeals at gmail.com or comment on this video. We read every comment. Bye for now.